Hey there, and a pleasant day to you, wherever you may be. Today, we're going to be talking all about the Roku Advertising Watermark. In just a few minutes, Scott Pierce, Senior Product Manager on the Roku Ads Trafficking Team, is going to explain how the Roku Advertising Watermark combats device spoofing and thus helps protect publishers and advertisers. Scott's going to break down what the ad watermark is and how developers can implement it in their channels. As Scott's going to explain, this is becoming especially important because starting after October 1st, the Roku advertising watermark must be applied to all ad requests and measurement beacons that originate from a Roku device. After Scott is done, we're going to do a live Q&A session where Scott will be joined by the Roku advertising framework engineering team. They're going to answer your questions, which you can submit in Slido. The Slido link for this webinar is goroku.com ad-watermark-webinar-qa. The link to the Slido is in the webinar registration form, and it's in the Zoom chat. Now, please be aware that while we will not comment on our roadmap or making any other forward-facing commitments through the Q during the Q&A session, we do welcome feature requests and other suggestions that help make implementing ads into your channels easier. If you have to leave early or you want to share this session, we are going to post this on the Roku Developers YouTube channel, the Roku Developers video portal, and the Roku Developers channel. So without further ado, let's get started. Scott Pierce, everyone. Thank you, Jonathan. And welcome, everyone. My name is Scott Pierce, and I'm a Senior Manager of Product Management at Roku, responsible for ad traffic quality. And I'm excited to talk to you today about the Roku Advertising Watermark. So in order to discuss the watermark, it's important that you have a background or understanding of device spoofing. So the emergence of CTV advertising over the past few years with its higher CPMs is attracting bad actors. In early 2021, our invalid traffic partners, Human and Double Verify, discovered device spoofing scheme they dubbed Pareto and Octobot respectively. So device spoofing occurs when bad actors misrepresent the device type, specifically the user agent, in ad requests and measurement beacons. The Pareto and Octobot investigations identified mobile apps that were generating spoofed CTV impressions, as well as data centers emulating server-side ad insertion or SSAI servers. So this scheme spoofed impressions on all major TV streaming platforms, including Roku. So how do we combat device spoofing? So device spoofing is tricky to manage because it, incur, it occurs off of our platform. So no platform can totally prevent device spoofing. However, this doesn't mean we can't do something about it. To combat device spoofing, the industry needs a means of validating ad requests and impressions to ensure they originated from genuine devices. So that leads us to the Roku Advertising Watermark. In February of this year, we launched the Roku Advertising Watermark, our device attestation solution to combat device spoofing. So you can think of it as a stamp or seal of authenticity like the hologram stickers you find on merchandise to prove it isn't counterfeit. So technically, the watermark is a cryptographically signed JSON web token signed with a JSON web signature that is passed in an HTTP header, specifically the x-roku-ad-watermark header in ad requests and measurement beacons, including impressions, quartiles, and completions that originate on Roku devices. The watermark is generated and applied automatically client side when Roku ad framework or RAF API calls are used for ad requests and measurement beacons. So here is an example of a Roku advertising watermark. Note that it is base 64 encoded, but this is what it looks like in, in the header of ad requests and measurement beacons. So if you were to decode this uh, watermark, you'll notice that there are three sections uh, color-coded on the left. So there's the red section, which is uh, in, uh, information or data that's passed in the header. There's the purple section, which is the payload. 
and then the blue section, which is the signature itself. So you'll notice here that there are certain information that's passed in the header, such as the encryption, encryption algorithm that we use, the KID or the key ID, which is the specific uh, public key you should use to decrypt the signature, and, and what type of signature we're using. In this case, it's uh, JWT. Okay, you'll also notice in the payload that there's some additional information here, uh, specifically uh, that you'll see that there's um, user agent information, there's the, the Roku ID for advertising or RITA, and, and some other information that I'll, I'll cover in detail uh, later. Okay, so how does one validate a Roku advertising watermark? So each watermark, each watermark JWT is signed with a private key that only Roku has. Uh, multiple keys are used, so there's no one-to-one -one mapping between a key and a unique or specific Roku device. Recipients of ad requests and measurement beacons may validate the watermark by retrieving the corresponding public key from a Roku, a public Roku server and verifying the following. Number one, that the signature validates using the public key. Number two, that the watermark time to live of one minute has not expired. Number three, that the RITA listed in the watermark is same as the one sent in the beacon or ad request URL. And four, that the user agent from the watermark matches the user agent in the header of the HTTP request. So what are the use cases for the Roku advertising watermark? So there's two primary use cases for the watermark. One is pre-bid, the second is post-bid. So in the pre-bid scenario, you have recipients of ad requests from Roku devices, so ad servers, SSPs, et cetera, that can look for and validate the watermark to confirm that the ad request originated from genuine Roku devices. Uh, soon, SSPs, will be allowed to forward the watermark in the HTTP header of their bid request to DSPs. So DSPs or other recipients downstream in the process may also validate the watermark pre-bid. The post-bid scenario involves recipients of measurement beacons from Roku devices. So this is really, it, it, this can really be any kind of ad tech entity, um, IVT vendors, ad servers, SSPs, DSPs, anyone that has an ad measurement beacon. So they can also look for and validate the watermark on their beacons to, to confirm that the impressions originated from genuine Roku devices. So in the post-bid scenario, exceptions should be logged and used to block the sources of spoofed impressions on a go-forward basis. So what, how does the Roku uh, advertising watermark work? So here's a very kind of over, overly simplified flow diagram of, of an ad request process. So you'll see here that on the left, and this is kind of uh, a timeline here. It goes from the ad request in, back into ad playback, all right? So we're gonna start at the top, the Roku app. So this is specifically uh, an app developed by a publisher that's published in the Roku channel store will uh, fetch ads, right? And they'll ma it'll make a request to RAF, the Roku ad framework, which will then send ad requests to ad servers and, and other entities like SSPs and SSEI servers uh, uh, that, and those ad requests will be watermarked. So, so the recipients of the ad requests that they're first in line to, to look for and validate the, the, the Roku advertising watermark. They'll then send a response back and that ad metadata is passed back to the Roku app the ads load and start playing, and then the measurement beacons start firing, right? So the first you have the impression beacon, then you have the quartile beacons, and then finally the completion beacon. And all those beacons will also be watermarked and then pass to measurement vendors, or again, as I mentioned earlier, really anyone that has a measurement beacon. 
So here are some of the partners that uh, are, are supporting the Roku advertising watermark today. Uh, they're either fully live or in the onboarding process. Um, so one view basis, double verify, Google ad manager, human, Innovid, Magnite, Oracle Moat, and Pubmatic. And we have uh, other partners in the pipeline, but you can see that we already are seeing very robust adoption of the watermark. So what are the benefits of the Roku advertising watermark? Well, really the watermark benefits everyone, right? It, it, it benefits publishers because it protects them against device spoofing and increases the value of, of their inventory. And I'll go into this into uh, more detail in, in a second. Uh, next, advertisers, right? Uh, advertisers know that they are buying authentic or genuine Roku impressions and, and not spoofed impressions. So that's very important to advertisers. And finally, our, our partners, our ad tech partners, uh, they also want to know that they're buying and selling genuine impressions. So it's very important to them also to, uh, to know that the impressions are, are, are um, valid and authentic. So what are you know more specific benefits to publishers specifically? So premium publisher inventory is the prime target for device spoofing. Uh, the, the spoofed impressions are, are typically sold in the open exchange at a steep discount. So say, for example, the impressions are sold at a $5 CPM compared to a true CPM of $25 or, or more. Not only are premium publishers losing out on this revenue, but the discounted CPMs put downward price pressure on valid impressions in the open exchange. So the watermark, the Roku advertising watermark Again, benefits publishers in three different ways. It, it secures premium publisher inventory. It, it, it captures revenue for publishers and it protects the value of their inventory in the open exchange. So what is our ask of you, the developers? So the Roku advertising watermark is a device attestation solution. Accordingly, the watermark may only be applied to ad requests and measurement beacons that originate on a Roku device. Our ask is that all measurement beacons be fired client-side via RAF. So today, Nielsen and Comscore beacons must be fired client-side. So the incremental ask is to fire all additional measurement beacons client-side. So this new requirement was announced April 4th and it was part of our spring 2022 certification update and will be enforced beginning October 1st of this year. So here are some additional resources for more information on the Roku advertising watermark. Uh, we have a marketing blog post. We have a developer blog post. We have a developer implementation guide and we have our spring 2022 certification update. We will also post a link to this recording of this webinar um, that, that you, you, you may also access. Okay, terrific. Well, uh, uh, you know, thank you very much for your time, everyone. At this, uh, at this point in time, I'd like to pass it back to Jonathan for our question and answer session. Thanks again. All right. Thank you so much, Scott. That was great. So um, we are now joined by Scott and Scott Pierce and Naz Banoff, who's on the Roku Advertising Framework Engineering Team. Um, so we're, we're opening this up for questions. You guys can enter your questions in the Slido. Um, which the uh, the link to the Slido is in the chat. Once again, uh, that is go.roku.com slash add dash watermark dash webinar dash QA. Um, so, so far, nothing, nothing's come through. Um, but uh, so, I mean, I'll. So let's see. 
So I guess one question I would ask, um, I don't know if you can ask, like how, how, you know, what are the steps for implementing the Roku advertising watermark? I know it's probably covered in the, in the presentation, but it might be worth reviewing. Yeah, uh, so uh, can everyone hear me, Jonathan? I can hear you. Okay, terrific. Um, so, so for for uh, publisher developers, there there's really mu there's really not much that they need to do to implement the watermark, uh, aside from uh, firing uh, measurement beacons client side. So, so that's really um, uh, the the only ask of of our developers. So, you know, um, th there's more work. Um, our ad tech partners who are um, receiving the watermark on uh, Roku ad requests and measurement beacons. Um, there's, there's more work they need to do to uh, receive and validate uh, the watermark. And so we have a separate you know, implementation guide and process for those partners. Um, but for developers, the process is very straightforward. Um, again, all they need to do is uh, you know, uh, fire measurement beacons client side via RAF. So, so far still no questions in the Slido. So maybe you guys can use this time if there's anything you guys want to address to the audience as far as the requirements for implementing the Roku ad watermark or any technical implementation details, any thoughts you guys have, anything else you guys can think of. I mean, I'll, I'll just quickly reiterate uh, the, the benefit for, for, for publishers, right? Um, so as I mentioned uh, during the webinar, um, you know, really, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the bad actors, when, when they're device spoofing, you know, they're, they're targeting high value, you premium publisher inventory, right? So, so they're, they're misrepresenting that inventory in the open exchange. And so, you know, the the you know, publishers are are a target or or a victim, if you will, of this uh, type of device spoofing, right? So it it really you know behooves uh, publishers to um, do what they need to do to support the watermark, so that we can help protect their inventory from device spoofing. Um, and again, uh, that that the the only ask, uh, the only uh, requirement or work needed is to um, fire uh, your measurement beacons, the client side via RAF. Excellent. All right, let's double check the Slido, see if we've got anything, let's see. Nothing yet. Um, it, I mean, if there's no questions, which would be a first for our webinars. Um, we'll we'll end this here. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I um, as as uh, as we mentioned during the webinar, uh, we'll we'll post a link to the a recording of of uh, the, this webinar. Uh, the webinar you, you noticed um, includes links for additional information on the watermark, um, and. Uh, yeah, uh, again, um, uh, again, I want to thank everyone for their time and, uh, and uh, you know, look forward to um, a broader and wider adoption uh, of the watermark later this year. Excellent. Yeah, and I'll just reiterate what Scott just said that uh, we'll get this posted on the uh, Roku Developers YouTube channel and the Roku Developer site and also the Roku channel, which you can watch on your Roku developers channel, which you can watch right from your TV. Um, and that'll be posted, you know, today or tomorrow. I thank you all so much for attending and look forward to seeing you all next month for our next webinar. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Take care.